this study looked at oxidative stress, kind of a way of saying inflammation, in healthy individuals. A meta-analysis of nine randomized control trials, providing us a good overview of across, again, nine trials, what is the aggregate finding? The fact that this is done in healthy subjects is noteworthy because it answers the question, well, maybe I don't have a full-blown disease or syndrome, inflammatory bowel disease, irritable bowel syndrome. And maybe I'm wondering if I could derive some benefit from probiotics, perhaps knowing that they had this immunomodulatory effect, reducing the amount of inflammation that can ensue from problems, namely in the small intestine, as we've discussed so many times in the past. So maybe there's some anti-inflammatory, antioxidant benefit I, as a somewhat or totally healthy person, could derive from supplementing with probiotics. The intervention was either placebo or probiotic, because remember the placebo has to be factored out, so hence placebo control design, great stuff. They looked at probiotic dosages that ranged from 1 billion all the way up through 200 billion. So a fairly large dose range was experimented with across these various trials. And the duration of these studies was between one and three months on average. What did they find? Well, excitingly, they found that probiotics led to reductions in oxidative stress with a moderate effect size, increased antioxidant capacity with a large effect size, and increased levels of what's called the master antioxidant glutathione with a small effect size. So really exciting. And now let's look at what might be happening underneath the surface that's allowing probiotics to lead to less oxidative stress and better antioxidant status in otherwise healthy individuals. And that's what you're seeing here, schematic from another journal paper. And a few things happen. When you have a poor diet, they're saying high fat here. And some of the research you'll see these researchers don't like high fat. Some may not like high processed food. So I would take this with a grain of salt, right? I think the, the cheeseburger depiction to denote perhaps processed food would be a better standard, maybe saying a unhealthy diet, a high processed food diet. Because we could also say a diet high in carbohydrate, too high in carbohydrate could be inflammatory. So if you're not eating a reasonable balanced diet, or if you're smoking, or if you're using certain drugs that are known to have oxidative side effects, or maybe even recreational drugs like smoking, you don't have good circadian health, meaning day and night rhythms, including sleep. All of these things can decrease bacterial diversity and interfere with the health of this very important mucous membrane, most namely in the small intestine. And when this membrane is not healthy, it becomes too or hyper permeable leading to leakage. This is leaky gut, as it's also described. And remember, on the other side of the gut membrane waits your immune system. And if the immune system is called into act, you now have oxidative stress. So all of these factors congeal together to lead to an unhealthy gut, leakage, and immune system-mediated inflammation leading to oxidative stress. But the story doesn't stop there. When you do have this inflammation and immune system that's being called in to clean up some of this leaky gut mess, there's a dysregulation of the immune system leading to an inflammatory cycle. And the cycle is one of the key things here. We've discussed on the podcast in the past that these cycles can be self-perpetuating, meaning let's say some of these unhealthy diet and lifestyle factors are present, gut health is impaired, that leads to this leakage, that leads to oxidative stress and inflammation, and this starts sort of a, a wind-up phenomena where the gut becomes even more leaky due to the inflammatory response, and then maybe even otherwise healthy foodstuffs start triggering this response, and you have this sort of runaway schematic here of the inflammatory cycle. Now, the good news is that this is very able to be remediated, and that's what we're seeing in this last study, wherein they found, again, a meta-analysis of nine trials finding reductions in oxidation.
So even though the pathophysiology can look scary, it's meant to help you understand how much power you have in your hands with dietary lifestyle, and in this case, supplemental protocols using probiotics. 